Hey everybody, I'm Bro Daddy, aka Patrick, and welcome to our season final episode 20. Welcome! This is what we're going to share with you guys what we did right in the tent, what we did wrong in the tent, about our whole grow. We're going to talk about our whole grow and the things that went right and the things that went wrong, and above all else, we are going to show you what we ended up getting out of the tent. And I'm going to tell you something. I am so over the moon surprised at what we got. I expected <laughs> so much less. So you guys stick around. Look, we got we got some top shelf quality that I didn't expect, um, and we also got um, a yield that we didn't expect. So, hallelujah! Let's take a little look at it. Let's look at Stormy first. Yeah, this is just the way they were in the tent. So, yep. Here's Stormy. She got three full jars. One, two, three. Completely full pack jars. We're gonna end up putting them in probably uh, Grove bags. So they're not gonna stay in the jars for the total cure. They've been in the jars for a couple days waiting for us to do a video. And this right here, this is Destiny. And she got three full jars as well. And over here we have Candy. Looks like she got three, three quarters full jars. And then of course we have we have Kitty over here, and she got about the same quantity, about the same amount, about three quarters of the way full for each one of these. And look at the tiny amount of trim. This is all the trim. <laughs> this is all the trim that I got off of all these girls. Remember, we took the fan leaves off before we hung them, and everything else is in jars. We didn't throw away anything that we harvested or we dried. Everything we dried and harvested is in the jars. So it's all right here in front of yeah. us. Let's talk about our yields that we got from each of our plants. Stormy, she produced 162 grams, and she's right here, and she's, she is five and a half ounces I got out of her. That's huge. I mean, that's, I didn't expect to get that, but I started guessing. Anyways, five and a half ounces. Destiny right here, we got 145 grams, which is five ounces. And then, um, what do we have here? We have Candy, and Candy got 128 grams, and she was four and a half ounces and 127 grams for Kitty, and she is four and a half ounces as well. So we got four and a half ounces out of two of them, and we almost got, well, four and a half, well, what did we get out of her? We got five and five and a half. What an awesome yield. What a surprise, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was, I can't even tell you how surprised I was. I, I was, I was awake. I did this Christmas Eve, a lot of the trimming Chris, or uh, New Year's Eve, and I'm sitting here trimming on New Year's Eve, and I'm in my bed, and I've got my little trim <laughs> bed in front of me, and I got lights so I can see, and everything is kind of funny. And I was so high, and I, I kept on going, oh, Allie, oh, <laughs> Al, you don't even understand how happy I am right now. I'm Because I, I got to touch the buds, and I started trimming them, and they were such a delight to trim. This was, honest to God, the first trim I didn't feel like I was in jail for, because every trim was a delight. I was over the moon. I was just absolutely over the moon because all this bud was actually really, really hard. There was no larf in any of it. I just didn't expect that. I was feeling the buds before I harvested and they felt a little squishy and I figured there was gonna be a lot of larf in there as well. Yeah, there was there was oh. not a lot of enthusiasm well, when we were chopping. And I don't wanna say down. zero larf because I would be lying, but if I, said, if I said less than a half a percent, there would be no lie in that. I literally had almost no larf. I can't say I had none. I had there are a couple little little buds, but really, they, uh, I don't know. They all seemed really. Hard. They all were. It was the first harvest I've ever had where I had so little little. And I will I will tell you the reason why, or one of the reasons why. One of the reasons why is because when I lollipopped, I also kept all those stems nice and clean, <clears throat> so I didn't get any lower growth or those lower buds on those lollipop stems. Um, I just kept them cleaned off all the time. I kept on taking those little tiny buds and <laughs> eating them. That's <laughs> what I did. I ate them. I, mm, oh, those are good. Anyways. That's what I did, and now you know my weight, and now it's, I think it's time to take a better look at the girls. Oh yeah. Because the quality, I don't know if I can grow better quality. Yes, there's strains, cultivars, that might allow me to grow with more, more trichomes and maybe nicer, but these are some of the prettiest buds I've ever grown, and they are just, they're just caked with trichomes as well. Let's go check out some nug porn. Let's take a closer look at Stormy and see what she ended up looking like um, in, the, in, the, in the trim bin um, when I get her all out of the jar. So we can take a closer look at her and show you some close-ups. Let me just tell you one thing. Trimming has never been funner. Um, Miss mm -hmm. Miss even wanted to trim. She wanted to help. And she did a little bit. And then I told her I wanted to do it all because I was really enjoying myself. So I stayed up pretty late on New Year's night and finished up my trimming. 
Here's what she looks like. Look at this. Look at this. Let me show you what she looks like. Look at this, sticky. Let me break one open, okay? Oh, it's just like gum. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's just, look at that. Yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. Just dense. Let me put this down here and let's get a close up. So that's the whole, what was it? Like five, and a, five, five and a half ounces of Stormy. Five and a half ounces and they were all really, really... Um, they're dense. dense. I mean, they're all they're all to touch. They're they're all just dense and, and gooky and uh, top shelf. You can't grow this stuff. I, I don't mean you can't grow this stuff. I mean, you can't <laughs> buy this stuff at a dispensary. I don't think you can get this quality in a dispensary. It's organic. It's uh, it's it's just dense and and beautiful. I, it's it's truly. I'm starting to feel like I'm I'm becoming a craft grower because you're not going to get this stuff in a dispensary. The only place you're going to get this stuff is from home growers like me and you. So, well, let's take a look at Destiny. Okay, we got a good look at at uh, at uh, Stormy, and let's move on to Destiny. Let's take a look at Destiny. A little closer look, and she is. I don't have her weight, but it was it was. It was five ounces, that's what it was. She was five ounces with Destiny. And of course, she's um, a different strain. She's the Fruity OG Kush. And she also had some um, foxtail going on. So we didn't know what they were going to end up looking like. They ended up to be really, really pretty buds when I was trimming them up. I was going, oh, this, there is something to this foxtailing. Let's take a closer look at one of these buds. Okay, I mean, these are all so, these are also the same. They're hard as rocks. Let me, let me pop one open. Do I have any huge ones here? Here's a good size one. Look at that one. Okay, that's really beautiful. Okay, and I'm gonna, do we get a good close-up? We'll get a closer look at it too. Let's, let's rip one open and see what it looks like and see if we can hear it. Let's be real quiet. Look how dense that is. Just dense, just dense vibe. A good look at the inside of that. I mean, there's no bud rock. Look at that. That's inside waiting for you, all those trichomes when you go to smoke it. <laughs> Let's take a closer look, Mrs. Grow Daddy. Come on, get your camera in here and give them a good look. Some, some thong. Oh, man. She smells great, too. She does smell a little bit fruity. And as you can see, she is... She's really beautiful. Um, I thought she might be... Uh, I don't know. We, I were, we didn't really know the... No, I thought she might be larfy, but no, she's very dense. All of her buds are real dense, and as you can see, she's she's just beautiful. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Well, let's let's move on, and let's show you our, our, our next girl, Candy. All right, let's give you a look at Candy. She was in the photo folk tent, and if you remember right, um, Kitty was with her. And she didn't get as much light on her in uh, the beginning of flower and in bed. So her buds, her buds were good, but she was less yielding and she got us four and a half ounces. But you know what? Four and a half ounces of top shelf bud. That's right. It, oh man, look at these. This smells so good. Oh my God. Oh, oh God, she smells good. Okay, let's take a good close look of four and a half ounces of candy, which is pseudo skunk because remember she's not skunk she doesn't smell skunky i don't know what she smells like oh uh, let's take a good close look at her here's here's a nice heart look at this they're all rock hard this is just amazing look at this let's check this out let's look at them one they're hard to break open they're so dense look at that it's just like gum see there oh yeah. And just sticky. My hands are getting so sticky. Let's take a close up and get a good look at these girls. Beautiful plant. Oh, look at that. Yeah, really gorgeous. Um, what can I say? Top shelf. I give I give this stuff um, an A minus because I, or an A an A A minus mm -hmm. A in quality because I know there's always room for a little bit of improvement. But that's it. Anyways, that's that is um, candy. And let me give you a look at Kitty. She was our, she was our other oh, uh, Fruity OG Kush. And she was also four and a half ounces. And let me show you, give you a closer look at her. And these oh, she really these. smells fruity. Yeah, yeah. And three, uh, oh, three wow. jars full, but these were not full jars like the other ones. No, they're kind of three quarters of the way like full. The, 
a five ounce. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Here we go. Let's take a look. Oh, we should some nice long buds. Look at some of these buds. Hard, hard as rocks. These are all hard. I can't even tell you how hard they are. It's hard to even show you. Anyways, um, they're beautiful. Let me crack one open for you. You want to get close, and I'll let me find a bud I want to crack open. They're all they're all kind of long. Here's a good one. This seems long. They're all very hard. Are we ready? Okay, I'm gonna crack this one open. They're hard to crack open because they're so dense. I can't. Even, this one won't. Look at that. You got that one? That's what she looks like on the inside. There's a few trichomes in there. Hopefully, some of them, hopefully I waited for some of them to get uh, to, to get cloudy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. You want to take some close-ups? Yeah. Show everybody what they look like. Oh man, she is fruity. I, I know why they call it fruity OG now because they're so just so fruity smelling. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. This, this one is kitty she wasn't you can see the purple more on her now oh that's right she was kind of purple huh she, no no it was just maybe it was purple but this you can see more purple in this one mm. now that she's harvested she's beautiful let's uh she's beautiful what can i say four and a half ounces of uh, of kitty and uh she looks gorgeous okay just want to show you um everything that i harvested and um this was all i got for as you can see the quality in this stuff. Look at all the sugar in this. I got a lot of sugar in this uh, trimmings. This is the, this is all the trimmings Can I got. Can you see it at the bottom? Yeah. Here, tip one over. Let's tip one. And kind of see some. See how it kind of all the sugar gets on the bottom, falls to the bottom. Oh wow! Yeah, there's a lot of sh there's a lot of trichomes on this on the uh, trim and stuff. So this will all make good bubble hash. See, you can see that. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no buds in here. Um, I had no larf, so. There's, there's no lar for buds in these containers. So this, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is my full yield after I harvested. Uh, there wasn't a, a, a leaf that got thrown away um, after it all dried, so it's all right here. And to be quite honest, this stuff smells wonderful. I mean, it, it smells really good. It doesn't smell like leaf. It's It smells like... It smells like a version of the mixed bud, actually. So um, this is gonna make a very good um, bubble hash. Um, it's not a lot. I'm used to having a lot of larf and stuff to mix with it uh, for bubble hash. I'm gonna have a very small yield on bubble hash this year or this harvest. So maybe this might actually sit. If I can wait for another uh, harvest, this may sit a while before I do a, another bubble hash. All right, just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what we might have done right during the grow and what we might have done wrong. And hopefully if you're following the grow and you're looking for a style or a way to grow because there's a thousand ways to get there and we have a lot of YouTubers showing you a million different ways to grow. Some of them good, some of them bad, but I think if you get to learn any one way of growing or style that works, I think that's great. And this is my style. You know, somebody made a comment on, on some of the comments a while ago about the style that I was going that I could do a lot better if I didn't. If I didn't try to keep them all the same height. Short and stout. Yeah, short and stout. And made a comment that if I grew them up, I could grow more. That's not true because I've already done it with my style. I know I can get my yields and my quality the way I grow. I like the way I do it. It's my style. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I like your style too. It's not just a style. This is a hobby. And for me to be able to um, train my plants the way I do and stuff, that's part of, that's part of me enjoying my grow. So... Being able to, um, this is my style. So let's, let's. And you know, we're really, really honest. So you will find facts, and we do screw up, and you hear all about it. We don't screw up, do we? Mm, well, let's talk about things we did right. All right, I'll tell you what we did do right. We got the lights right this time. Kind yeah. of. I mean, we did a light experiment, so we, we we learned that putting the light at the top of the tent isn't going to work unless you have a very, very, very high-powered light. So when you can leave it at the top of the tent and, and really put the right amount of par on it, um, our light just wasn't powerful enough to work at 30 inches away on our flowering girls. We had to bring it down. Yeah, we can spend more money in veg and in all the other part aspects of the grow. We can spend more money and have the light turned up higher, um, you know, because it's gonna have to be up higher because it's farther away. So yeah, we learned that it doesn't really work. If you wanna grow efficiently, you keep your lights 
I, I don't know. Each man. Keep an eye on the par. Well, but manufacturers have a suggested height, and I don't know if it's, they're all the same. I mean, one light from the next. I I kept my light approximate, no 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 closer than 17 inches in flower, and I tried to run them at 20 inches most of the grow until I started to get, and still until I was in flower and really wanted to get some more intensity on on my girls. And we another thing we did really good is we followed. We followed what the leaves were telling. What the leaves were telling us, and and I I, I get my information from the same place I guess a lot of you guys do from YouTube. And GT over in the grow tent, he gave me the whole leaf thing. Look at the leaves, and that's that was that was a lightning, that was a bulb going light, off. Light bulb went off. Yeah, because I the last four grows that since I've been growing, I really haven't known. How do you know? when you have the light in the right place or at the right um, intensity. And I but honestly- Once you start seeing light damage, it's, you've kind of done the damage. You kind of have done the damage. And you know what? You should never have your lights um, where they're in a position to change the color of your leaves and start curling them. I mean, you've clearly went way overboard at this point from what I've learned. And if you just pay attention in every stage of your growth and pay attention to the leaves, it's, it's, it really has. Thank you, GT, because without you, I'm telling you, I, I don't think I would have ever learned this little little trick about light and knowing where to put my lights and knowing how much light to give my girls. Thank you. So we did that right, and we will be doing that for probably the remainder forever. of our- Forever. Forever. That was <laughs> awesome. And the nutrients. We learned a lot about nutrients this time. We added some things to what we were doing, and because- What's the list of stuff you always use? I always use a mycorrhizae. I always use um, worm castings. I always use uh, Gaia Green 444 and Gaia Green 284. And I usually use molasses a couple times during the grow, you know, in my waterings. And I added, I added Bokashi to my grow. Now, not really to my last grow. I mean, I did one top dressing with some Bokashi, but really the Bokashi is gonna work best when you have a chance, when you amend your soil, to put it in your soil. That's the best of, and we're gonna do it this next round. We're gonna put Bukashi in there. Right now, I took my old soil, and I I put Bukashi in it, worm castings and everything, and I'm getting my old soil ready, not for my next grow, because I'm gonna let that stuff sit for about, about three months. I'm gonna let it sit until my following grow, so I have some good, fresh soil that's had a chance to really- Cook. Well, cook and come back. I mean, because we've got all the microbes in there working, and the Bukashi, and the earthworms that I put in, or the earth, the worm castings that I threw in there, they're really going to um, make the soil just yeah. come back to life. And so based on the, the amazing quality of these nugs, you yeah. were, we were thinking that maybe the, the new things might have helped, like the Bokashi and the... Wait a minute. I also used a, a new Gaia Green amendment, which is the mineralized phosphate, which is AKA bat guano. And my buds are all hard. What can I say? The guy at the grow store told me this is how you're going to get your buds you know, more dense and more hard. So I added it. And I didn't even add it to when I amended my soil. I only added it in the one top dressing. Yeah, so, so shout out to uh, Mr. Fertilizer. Yeah, Mr. Fertilizer um, told me that. Actually, it was the owner. He's not really the owner anymore. He just was filling in for somebody, helping somebody out, filling in for a couple anyway, days. he's our guy. He's our guy. So, and we also added some voodoo juice. And we did, we got that kind of late. And we're going to, we're going to, this is all for soil, it's right? It's for microbe stuff. It's for microbe stuff to help the microbes. And I'm going to enter that into the, uh, enter that into the soil. I think it was the first, it was the first two weeks of, um, flower, of, of veg so. and the first two weeks of flower, I believe. I'll look at the bottle and see. But I think we put it in a couple waterings at those two stages. And we'll do that. Why not? Why hey, not? Why mess with there? success? Because uh, this was a surprisingly good a yield. Absolutely. And yeah. another thing that I really liked that what I did was new was I used a seven gallon, um, I used oh yeah, the up potting regimen that you did. It was well, different from previous growth. Well, I think it was. Well, we did that. We did the solo cups, which was great, and then we went to the one and a half gallon, and then we moved them up into the seven gallon, not the five or the three gallon. We moved them to the seven. That was a big move for me. And I'll tell you what. By the time, by the time I got into flower, I was absolutely tired with the seven gallon because they took so much water every watering and took so long to water all these girls because I I, I dried them out completely, so they would take two five almost a, for. It would take almost two complete five-gallon buckets to water four plants every... And, and they were taking like 11 days. They were taking 11 in, days to dry veg out. To, to go from saturated to dried. Yeah, and I didn't think I didn't think I was going to want to put them back into seven-gallon. But I'll tell you what, I've done some thinking. I've also done some uh, research on YouTube and found a couple growers that grow in seven, like um, 
a, uh, build a soil. You guys, I don't know the guy's name, and I'm sorry because uh, he does an excellent. We'll put a link. We should because it, he, he really is a great grower. Grows a lot of plants, and he likes to grow in a lot bigger um, Container. containers. And he grows in specifically seven and bigger. And he grows organically, and he goes into organic grow. And I kind of see why, because when I put him in the seven gallon, I put on a top dressing. I think the first week of flower or going the transition. I don't know, but you can look on my videos and whatever. I put it like I only put one top dressing on these girls, and they went the whole thing, and they never needed they never needed anything but water the entire grow. So we're gonna go back, and I didn't think I would, but I'm gonna go back in the seven gallon. I'm recycling my soil, so I'm not throwing away the soil. And um, what can I say? I think I think if you're gonna grow organically with amendments, I do think a bigger container will allow you to go all the way through the grow. I've, I've, yeah, and our, our uh, plants looked really green and healthy and nice the whole time. They never even really fade. They didn't fade. And it's okay if they do fade. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing if your, your plants are fading in the last couple weeks because they're using up what is left in the soil. So it's good, but my plants had plenty through their whole thing. They barely faded. Yeah, they never ran out. They never really ran out of what they needed and they never looked like they needed anything. So we're gonna go back into the seven gallons for that reason alone. Also, I'm gonna water differently in the seven gallons this time. I'm gonna water thoroughly like I did all the way through veg. It's gonna be once every 11 days when it, when they soak up all the, all the water. And then when I start to get in, when, once they hit where they start drinking, when they start drinking every five days, when the root system gets big enough and yeah, I know when it dries out because it, it was taking like 11 days too to, long. to fully dry out it's too long and then eventually it went to five days between watering yeah just uh, one week all of a sudden the roots were there and it started asking it went really literally from 10 or 11 days to five days and it lasted through the grow pretty much that's they, they drank this and you know what they never even slowed down in flower usually a lot of times in flower they'll slow down in drinking <coughs> yeah, slow we down figured it out. You, you, we did the math, and it was like 1.6 liters per day, and you started feeding them, well, like watering them every three days. I think that's what it was. To kind of keep it moist. Every two or three days. So I'm going to go, absolutely, so next grow, I plan on using the seven gallons, and I plan, when they start drinking every five days, I know they've got a root system, and I know I'm not going to overwater them, and I'm going to probably water them every two days. Mm -hmm. and just keep the microbes active yeah i think that's important and i think it'll help it helps break down it in an organic grow it helps break down the amendments that i've added and and that will allow the roots to it to uptake more nutrients if, if if they need to for availability and well this is what we've learned and this is what we're going to do so i think we also flipped at the right time i mean clearly i mean i didn't grow them right because there were too many bud sites but the plants were big enough, they had a big enough root system to give us a full yield. So I feel like we flipped them appropriately. I think you also, um, I think we harvested at the right time. Oh, absolutely. But that's to go without saying, because everybody will want to harvest at different times or even figure it out. And I think that's part of becoming a grower is knowing what you like. And I was harvesting a lot later before. I feel like I'm harvesting earlier than I used to, uh, a little earlier. I'm not waiting for quite as many um, amber trichomes I'm looking for them all to be cloudy. You want that THC. Well, and it's just good. I don't even know what to say besides, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, I'm starting to, you know, I've ran out of, almost run out of my all my smoke and I started smoking some of my last uh, stuff from my last grow and some of my other stuff. And I'm finding that the THC is quite high, you know, with um, with with it. It's just, it's just, it's just good. It's just good. And I, I don't know, I, we feel like we're harvesting the right time. So I'm not worried about whatever you think about when I harvest them because you have your own preferences. <laughs> uh, this is my fifth grow and I feel like I'm really getting to know when I like to harvest and everything looks beautiful. Well, things we did wrong on this harvest, um, we didn't do a lot wrong. I mean, to be honest, we had too many bud sites. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that was the, That's the that, elephant that, in the room, right? Yeah, it's too many bud sites. Gave me a little bit of um, S, MS? Yeah, a little oh, bit of SBS. SBS, small bud syndrome. I had some small bud syndrome, and that was from the prior grow. I'm feeling a lot better about my smaller bud syndrome now. I don't think I need to go to counseling. I think we, <laughs> we took care of that, but there were too many bud sites, and I feel like if we had less, bu less, less bud sites, we would have bigger, we can't bigger have denser. Colas. We can't have bigger, uh, uh, denser buds. I mean, everything was clearly, they were all tops, and they were all really dense. So um, growing them on top the way I did really worked well. They would have stretched and stacked more if there had been fewer. Absolutely, stems would be bigger. I mean, well, we'll find out next grow. You're gonna have to come back and watch and see us do it 
Oh, we're trying to get an A next time. Yeah, we got an A minus. <laughs> we're giving ourselves an A minus this time. Is that what we gave ourselves? I think we gave ourselves a B. A B. Okay, because we wanted to leave room for improvement. And and also, we can't get an A or anything even close to an A unless we get an pound average of and six. A half. Until we get a, lap, a, six, a pound and a half or six ounces average of plant, that's an A of good quality. That's an A. If you can do that, um, you got an A. Even though I think we have top, not, top shelf bud. And just quite a lot. I don't even know. I, see, look at me. I'm like a little kid. I'm giddy. This is me, and this is why we do. This is why we do our YouTube because I'm like a little child, and I'm, I talk to he people. Is. People are tired of listening to me talk about uh, the quality and the fun and the, and and just the great stuff we're doing in in our studio every day. We also learned about VDP. We didn't learn about VDP. It's VPD. I did it again, didn't I? Yeah, never mind. How about VPD? Let's start with VPD. We, <laughs> VPD, we're going to do a better, a better, we're going to do better at keeping track of our VPD and we're, of course we're going to write it on um, our next Grow More. We're going to start keeping better logs. That's that's a New Year's resolution, better logs. So when we do something right and we want to look back or wrong like we did, we screwed up. We wanted to look back and see what we did um, on our last grow to flip the girls. Yeah, we're just we, going to add temperature and humidity basically to the logs. You're pretty good about, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty good about documenting everything day by day but not the temperature and the humidity yeah but it's not even that we document everything in our videos but we don't have a book or or pages we can go to and i can go back and look which we're gonna do i got i can't go back and look through all my videos for something we got a spreadsheet yeah 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 so and and what we learned we learned you know the mosquito dumps i am the knack guy now and <laughs> at some point i may end up having to do a a, a whole video on how to use because i did learn how to use them and guns. i'll tell you what the bottom line is I listened to a lot of different people that talk about gnats, and they most of them said put a dunk in water in a five-gallon bucket for overnight and use that water. No, it's not long enough. Um, it's it's BTI. It really I, I don't want to tell you what it is because I don't even know. Do you know what Bax, BTI? Something like Bacillus thuringiensis aurealis or something. Yeah, it's it's a bacteria that kills gnats by yeah. starving them. It yeah. paralyzes it, their gut. Yeah. Well, when you put it in the water in a bucket of water, it, it slowly um, what it activates it, with the water. It, well, what do you call it though? It, it, Rehydrates? No, it uh, dilutes. What do you call it when it, when it so much it dissolves? Comes off? Dissolves slowly. Those dunks are meant to dissolve over 30 days. So you got 30 days on one of those dunks. So if you put it in a bucket for five days, I take them out and reuse them. I don't just throw them out. I'll take it out and reuse it. But you need five, I would suggest at least five days for some good and we're dunk gonna, water. Yeah, and we're going to measure the PPMs that you get where it yeah, actually works. I did make a mistake and I didn't take the, a PPM reading of what I was using. And that's the best way to explain, you know, where the PPM should be on the dunk. When, because the PPMs go up. The longer those things are in the water, they bring the PPMs up in, PPMs up in the water. And I could really kind of tell you what the PPM, they were up over 250, I think. From, from, I think they started out at 25 out of the tap. Just with plain water. And then they went up over five days, they went up to 225 or something, I'm guessing the PPMs. And that but water, anyway. that water got rid of my, got rid of my gnats. I, I did get rid of my gnats before my grow was done. Yeah. And um, I learned a very valuable lesson on how to use gnats, uh, you, how to use dunks for gnats. And it does work, it doesn't hurt the mi microbes. It's very, it's, I don't know why more people don't talk about it. And I see everybody using these stickies which is great, everybody has them. Why don't they just use some gnats, some, some uh, Mosquito dunk. dunks. Why don't they just get rid of the gnats? Why do they put up with them? I can't handle them, so they're gone. And anyway, so what else should we do? We uh, we need to get better locks. Most of us want to grow better bud sites. I think I think the bottom line, what we learned is, I think um, is less bud sites is gonna be. I think that's the only thing we'd really change. Yeah, we're gonna grow with less bud sites, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have, Prettier butts. They're gonna be. They're gonna be probably bigger colas and look a little bigger on camera. Look a little nicer for the grow. They're gonna add a little yield, and they're gonna be a lot less work because I'm not gonna need to tie down 50 stems. Yeah, you saw those tie downs around yeah. all my bags. That was insane. I've it was never a had, lot. I've never had tie downs like that before, and for a reason because of all the bud sites. I had to tie them and move them all down. It was a lot of work. I don't want to do that again. I, I don't mind using 10, 15 tie downs around it. Not 30, like I had. It was intense. It was intense. So to get in there and water, you're watering like there's bars. You know, <laughs> these 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 wire bars. Anyway, so we learned that. That is our wrap up for the season. Thank you guys. I, I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart, you guys coming by to watch our grow, us getting to grow. And and by the way, 
I feel so much better at the harvest because I'm able to actually, I'm pretty proud of what we grew this grow where I, I didn't think I would be. I thought I was gonna be dismally disappointed again because I had too many buds and I'm not. It all turned out great. Maybe not, it could have been a little bit more of a yield up, but you know what? This is a yield that I can be happy with. I can still give some friends some smoke and I can give them smoke that I'm proud of. When I give it to them, I'll know that I'm giving them some really good quality buds, which feels good when you're giving somebody some really good stuff. So anyways, love you guys. Don't forget, I know we're saying this at the end, don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit your, your little bell here for uh, notifications. Don't forget to like. That's most important because I'll tell you what, this is what we live on. I know you don't understand this, but I'll tell you what, I don't even know what it does for the algorithm. They say it's okay for, but for us, we need the likes. The uh, dopamine hit. The do <laughs> we need the dopamine hit of likes because it keeps us going here, making videos for you guys. We work really hard on these videos. I know, I know, they may be, I know, if you don't like our videos, stick around. They're getting better every time. We're getting better at it. Remember, we're, we're new to the, we're a new YouTuber setup and we have no background in video or any of this. We're learning all, or growing, I mean, for the most part. We're beginners at everything. This is this has just been a pleasure. This has been fun. Love you guys. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Are you shitting here on? You motherfucker! No, out of juice at this very moment. I. Do.